<laughs> Welcome to Money Making Conversation. That's right. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. Each Money Making Conversation talk show is about entrepreneurship and entertainment. I provide the consumer and business owner access to celebrities, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and industry decision makers. I recognize that we all have different definitions for success. For some, it's a sizable paycheck. Mine is helping people wake up and inspiring them to accomplish their goals and living their very best life. These are my passions, and that's what I'm going to do for you. I want you to stop tripping over these small challenges and prepare to rise above the bigger obstacles that life will present to you. The Money Making Conversation interviews provide relatable information to listen about career and financial planning, entrepreneurship, motivation, leadership, overcoming the odds, and how to live a balanced life. My next guest, he's on the phone, kicked off his career portraying NYPD Blue Detective Baldwin Jones on the ABC police drama NYPD Blue from 2000 to 2005. His other television credits include Ravenwood, Reckless, Common Law, Let's Stay Together, Raising the Bar, CIS Miami, and The Cleaner, and films like No Good Deed, Medea's Family Reunion. Now I'm a fanatic. I'm just letting everybody know about Marvel Cinema Universe. So lately, I've been able to see him play the role of Agent Alfonso Mack. McKenzie on ABC's Marvel's Agents of Shields. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations, my man, Henry Simmons. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Henry, first of all, you know, I, I saw the premiere, so and I know the series, so I saw the premiere, so we can talk about that. We won't talk about that. But I want to just talk about your career a little bit here. First of all, how much time do you do you stay Keep staying in shape because you're in shape. Last night I saw you on the premiere and uh, you were looking good, my man. Them, them arms, they let you show the arms off, so the guns. <laughs> so how much time you in the gym, man? I'm just wondering because I know I don't look like that. I don't, I can't look oh, like that. Oh, man. Some of it was natural, I mean, but I know you're working on it. I know some of it, God gave it to you, but you're keeping it in shape. How's that working out for you? Oh, let me tell you something. It's, it's, it's hard work. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. you know, especially for this role right here, I... Uh, I worked out more. I was working out six days a week mm-hmm. and I, I didn't take any shortcuts like, you know, some of these actors out here doing uh, these synthetic drugs. Right. And steroids, all mm-hmm. stuff. I don't do that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's all hard work. Right. Um, but I tell you, it's hard because you get up at, you know, five o'clock in the morning, right. you're, you start work at six o'clock, you get done at eight, you get home at, at uh, nine. 9.30, you spend time with your family. Mm-hmm. It's about 10.30, 11 o'clock. That's when I would start working out. Wow. I would start working out mm-hmm. 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Get up uh, about uh, 12, 12.30, 30 mm-hmm. for the next day. Go to sleep and mm-hmm. get ready and do it all again. Because that's your that's your career. That's your brand. That's your look. So you can't show up for an audition with a pot belly. That's that. That's not. No, a- no, 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 no. <laughs> that, 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 you know, I'm telling you right now. Even if I wasn't uh, uh, an actor, I would never let that happen. I, I couldn't do it. I could couldn't do, do it, it. Could do it because that's part of your brand. And I always tell people that you know your brand, your model. People have a certain expectation. They see a headshot. They see your body of work. When you come in for an audition, or they give you a role, because sometimes you're blessed like that because they've seen your body of work. When you walk through that door, that's what they're expecting. That that commitment that same effort, that same consistency. How has it been in, 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 you, you, in your estimation, with looking at your career, and you have a great body of work, what has been the difficulties of maintaining that consistency, uh, getting the opportunity to stay in front of the person who, uh, the, the decision makers of Hollywood, the casting directors? Well, you know, here's the thing. Uh, I'm old school. I'm, I'm going to just tell you right now. I'm old school in the way I approach my uh, mm-hmm. My career now that that's good and bad right a lot of times a lot of people nowadays use social media they involve their personal lives their mm-hmm. family use mm-hmm. media but they're showing so many so many aspects of their lives and that gives them so many followers and that does help them right uh to some degree in terms of getting jobs now those aren't the jobs I want. If if someone, if a casting director, if a director is looking at my social media account, right, and seeing, oh, he's popular, therefore I'm going to give him a job. Right. That's not the job I, I want. The job that is based on uh, artistry, right. And so, therefore, and, and I'm I'm a person that believes in privacy. I, I believe in the old school way of mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. Social, not not showing. Like if you go to my um, uh, Instagram account. You won't see pictures of my kids. You know, right. see pictures of my mm-hmm. house and mm-hmm. you know all that stuff. And and uh and also I I try to do things with integrity. Thank you. And, and that's what I started. I said the two things that I want in this business. Mm-hmm. 
I want longevity, obviously, because mm-hmm. longevity to me is equivalent to success. Uh, it's longevity and integrity. Right. I don't want to start doing things just uh, to be doing them. And, and when I look back on it, I question why I did it or I'm humiliated by it. I don't want that. Right. Uh, but I tell you, when you operate with integrity, mm-hmm. that means your journey your journey is going to have a little bit more ups and downs. It's going to be a little bit longer on the mm-hmm. road. Mm-hmm. You're not taking everything that's just thrown at you. Right. Right. You know, and I believe that, you know, I've looked at it as relationships are key too, and that and the integrity comes with that. If you have integrity, you're going to have relationships. And if you have relationships, when people need you, they know your body of work. And that's all you're saying. You say, Rashawn, look, you can have the followers, but if you don't have the body of the work, that can bite you in the butt. Because when you exactly. get on that set, you know, and you and sometimes you're challenged by ta- terrific talent. You know, because and sometimes you're not the biggest star on the set. Sometimes you're in a great ensemble and you have to assemble, which is kind of like what you have to deal with with Marvel's Agents of Shields. That's a great Uh ensemble that you have to deal with and you have to mesh your talent inside of them and everything feels relatable, organic. And that's why, you know, just watching you on that series has been a blessing to me because you're a black superhero. Thank and and Thank I'm, I'm, I'm just tell you know, and people need to understand that's why Black Panther was so popular, because, you know, we all need to feel that uh, we're in that, in that fantasy world that we are part of the part of the equation. And I'm going to tell you something, man. You know, I know you were on the second season. You were like a recurring character. And when they made you, I think the third season, when they made you a, re, uh, a regular, man, I smiled, Henry. I smiled, brother. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I- you know, and, you know. I, look, I also, I do have. I think there's a responsibility to my artistry, mm-hmm. but I do also recognize there's a responsibility on being a a, a black man in this business because mm-hmm. I know, I know. At least I'm trying to be cognizant of what I represent. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, not only to to other uh, uh, people of color, but also my my children. Yes, sir. And and also that's why I want to operate in integrity. And and you know. Uh, when, when I hear people say things like that, particularly about Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., when they say, wow, they see this guy and he's inspiring, you know, because he's a black man. Mm-hmm. And, you think, and, look, and I'm going to tell you like this. It, it, I, I was so surprised, number one. You were? You were? That, well, well, surprised and flattered that they made me director. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. Because you don't see, particularly in that position, mm-hmm. I, I, I... I wouldn't think that uh, that they would make a, a, a black man the leader of that squad. I thought right. it would be someone else, mm-hmm. but that speaks volumes into the writers and producers that I work with. Right, right. And, you know, and, 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 and that's that's important because you know, first of all, you know, you're not just an ordinary. You're you're a big black man, and I say that in a good way. Whenever you walk in a room, you feel a room. You know, they go, "Wow, that guy looks good. He's in shape. He, who is that guy? You you are here. Who is that guy? Type person who walks in the room, and oh, because, and that that's really good. But that's a responsibility that comes with that. And so and so when I look at the with the so now when I say that when they, when they made you that recurring character, then they made you the regular. It made it legitimately a, a, a level of responsibility that I can be engaged into this show because I see a part of me. My kids see a part of me. My friends see a part of me in that show that looks like me. Because guess what? In the fantasy world, we are heroes too. And you are a hero. And that's mentoring other people because, you know, I I, I grew up watching, you know, buying a Hulk, combined Captain America and they were my fantasies. Now and that's a good fantasy to have because because that's a wish. That's a dream. And to see a black man who looks who looks statuous, who looks in shape, who looks good. That's a blessing, man. And that's a blessing for not only for people of color, but for white America to see you as well as a leader, as a guy oh, wow. of authority. That. No. That's important, man. I just wanted to. Let, that's why I was excited about interviewing you today, Henry, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, as an actor. So we get in these vacuums and we just do the best job we can do. But when you step out into my world, you know, the, the you know, the, the golden corral world, the, the Kroger world, the regular people out there shopping at Ralph's, you know, that's that's the people that, that look at you and go, you go, why is he looking at me like, wait, because guess what? You are doing you mean something to us. 
Henry. Oh, uh, well, I'm one of those regular people. I don't know what you're talking about. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a regular guy, though. I'm a regular guy, but I, I appreciate that. I you appreciate know. that. Oh, yeah, you know, Alfonso Mack. Now, yeah, I'm going to tell you something, Alfonso. You know, your character on the show now. You know, you, cause I, 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 I'm not shaped like you, but I got a bald head and a beard too. You know, kind of keep it close cut. So, <laughs> I, 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 I would just let you know, I, I, I fade in that lane that you live in. Okay, now, there you go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, now you're the director, which like Nick Fury in the Marvel movies, he was the director. So you kind of like the Nick Fury character on the television series Marvel's Agents of Shields, because my man Coulson, he's what he's like a robot this season or something. He probably he, he was brought back from the dead. Can you? Can you fill us in on the details? Because I saw the premiere, and uh, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, he. The thing is, he uh, he died, right? And he was kind of. And then there was another character last season, season six, that looked quite a bit like him, and I guess was infused with uh, in another dimension. Mm-hmm. He was a whole person, uh, but when he died. Um, there's these androids called Chronicoms. Right. And uh, uh, Simmons, the Simmons character, was able to infuse all of Coulson's uh, thoughts and feelings and memories, everything, into this Chronicom. So she created Coulson in a way. Although he is this, an android, he is like Coulson in, in the way he thinks mm-hmm. and moves and feels. So that's the way they were. The writers were brilliant in being being able to bring him back that way. Right. Um, right. Uh, so now he's back, and he his position is different because he's an agent. Right. And also he's different because he has this. Uh, he has strength. He's kind of like a superhero now. Right. Right. Strength. Right. Like like Quake. Quake really has the big power out there because she exactly. can like throw people up. you know you come close to her you know she can just blast you away but that exactly. but 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 now he has this an amazing strength he can move real quick and so so it's really ironic because you know he, you know I, I, his, he was first introduced into the marvel series in the movie thor and of course we all saw him die in the avenger movies and then he somehow right. he was brought back to life for the television series which was a great get for us so him dying in front of us we're kind of used to him Dying and coming back. <laughs> so, 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 so Henry, like it wasn't a stretch. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a stretch, though. Oh, he back? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's get this little brain transfer straight st- situation straight, so we can go on, get on with the show. Because Carlson, yeah, he cannot yeah. die. He's the vampire of a uh, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's put it this way: if he can keep coming back, they can resurrect uh, Captain America, uh, uh, everybody, uh, uh, Iron Man, everybody. I can get young again, okay? <laughs> if Colson can keep coming back, because he had never had a superpower. So tell us about your character. Uh, you know, we talked about you being the director, but tell about tell us about the whole uh, you know, because your characters has have had certain levels of ev- evolution in this series and different roles and different leaps and different transitions, yeah. different models. Talk about it when you was introduced into the show and bring us forward, okay? Sure. Well, uh, initially, I, I went on just a, a simple audition, and uh, you know, about two weeks later, they asked me to come aboard. And I was yes, like, sir. "Sure," but the problem was, at the time, the first season was not on Netflix. I didn't have this. I didn't. I didn't know what I was stepping into. I mean, I had an idea because I'd seen a little bit of the show, but I didn't. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. My first day there, it was just. It was everything I thought it would be and more. I mean, there were, uh, the, the technology, you walk on set, there's, there's, there were like 20 people at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these, this weaponry, the names of all these guns, the, the, the aircraft and, and, uh, all this technical language and the mm-hmm. levels, this, all that. And it was a whole new world. I knew right away that this is what I want to be a part of. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's the thing. My first season, I was recurring and I was advised not to do it because uh, people, people were like, you know, don't, don't do that. You know, don't, don't recur the whole season. Cause then they can drop you at the end. Right. But here's my thing. Mm-hmm. I know once I get in, I believe in my talent. Right. I, you, I, I know how hard I work and bet I know on you. Mm-hmm. I bet on me and mm-hmm. I bet on God. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that, that's my number one. Uh, so, 
I knew. I said, no, no, I'm not worried about it. I know I'm going to recur. I'm going to recur. And I know they're going to, there's no doubt in my mind. And that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And then they elevated me to a uh, 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 series regular. But it, the, the trend, the way Mac came about initially, I don't know if you remember, he was so reluctant to fight. He didn't want to fight. Right, he, right. He's a man of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was no way in the world he was going to fight. Mm-hmm. And he, he, Colson said, look, I need you to get out there. So finally he got out there and, and he was doing everything he could to uh, maintain the fight, but not kill anyone and just do what would need to be done. And matter of fact, he tried to leave in the, in the uh, first. I remember like, that. I'm not, they, mm. I'm not cut out for this. Right. Um, but as things progressed, there were times that Colson had to leave. Like, I think there was one time when he had the Cree blood in him mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. he uh, needed to explore that. And... And the one thing I like is that right off the bat, they had um, my character, Mac, butting heads with Colson. Right. Because Colson was using S.H.I.E.L.D. for his own, uh, uh, his own means instead of using it for the greater good. And Mac was against that. And Mac was right. He's like, look, you, you can't be using it to find out all about this creep. But this is about saving the world. This is about doing the, the bigger picture, not just your picture. And he was, but he, I was the one that was vocal against Colson. I like that. Mm-hmm. And but we had mutual respect. And you notice when Colson would leave, he would put me in charge. Mm-hmm. So eventually, you know, uh, I was out in the field. They gave me the shotgun axe and the fighting and all that. So when we get down to uh, season, I think it was five, end of five, where they decide who's going to be the director after Colson dies. I thought for sure it was going to be either Quake <laughs> or that's what it was in the, in the comics or May. Um, mm-hmm. May. And when they gave me the uh, mantle, I was, uh, I was extremely flattered. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Extremely flattered because it says two things. It says something about me personally, right. as an actor. Mm-hmm. They know that I have the authority. Right. The uh, uh, the characteristics of leadership and integrity. Thank you. And as an actor, the the strength to carry that mantle, right, and lead. And as a, a as the character uh, of Mac, they they see through his progression that he has uh, that I've infused him with those qualities as well. Absolutely. And, and they believed in me, and that's that was something that meant it meant so much to me. I I, I just I'm not gonna lie. Well, guess what? Meant something to me too. Okay, meant something oh, to good, a lot good. of people out there of color to see you in uh, an, an authority, an authority figure. Hey, when Nick Fury comes on the screen and ordering the uh, Avengers around, I feel good. Ordering Spider Man, yeah. I feel good because you go wow. Because we all know that could have been a white character. Okay, easily exactly. could have been a white character. Exactly. So, but they made a decision that based on your talents, color didn't matter. You are the color leader. didn't. Oh, have mercy. Oh, yeah. It didn't Color matter. Didn't matter. It didn't matter. And uh, because now this is why we're going to go to the series. Now, this, this, this is the final mission. OK, mm. watching the premiere episode last night, you guys are transported back to 1931. Now, this is why this is important to me. First of all, you were wearing a fly suit. OK, just want to let you know that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> just want to let you know you were you were looking at you were wearing something I definitely would have put on because I'm a tailor made guy, Henry. You know, I'm just let you know. That's uh, you know you know how to cock that hat too. Right? God, yeah, man, I, I man, man, Henry, you, you, know, you, you didn't you didn't let me get to the hat. Come on now, I said, look at this fool. Look at this fool got his hat cocked to the side. He is a brother in 1931. <laughs> you a fool, Henry. I, I'm gonna get on you about that hat. I said I can't believe this fool got these brown shoes on. Okay, signed up, walking down here with these white folks with his hat cocked to the side in 1931. You know that can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you darn right. <laughs> I say if we're gonna do, it, we're gonna do it. I'll oh my right god! <laughs> oh my god! Because you know it was really interesting because of the fact that this is where it gets interesting because of the fact that it's 1931 and we know the racial situation. In 1931. Oh, yeah. It's 1931. We know how women were treated in 1931. And here you are, uh, a man of authority, the boss of these white people. Because mm. we got to talk like this. Because, because I think that had to be thought out 
when that time period was picked. They, they, they do, okay. you know, talk us through that whole process because you knew that time period that you couldn't walk around just giving them orders out in public because that would draw attention. And also when people came to you negative, because the scene in the in the premiere where somebody came to you negative because negative because you were a person of color, you react and you go, ho, 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 don't make no ripples. Don't, don't make no right, ripples. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that was really. And then uh, I think Chloe's character, you know, when she was walking into the uh, bar area, uh, that that that, uh, that uh, this guy treated her like she was a a stupid female in his eyes. You know, <laughs> why are you at home? You know, taking care of babies, and she reacted to that. I think that is so clever because of the fact that it allows us to see, you know, how 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 time has changed. But if you go back to that time, it's still the same. But you guys got to play out your roles and uh, the characters that we believe that you are in a period that's not conducive to that particular particular uh, um, social economic, uh, social stylings. Talk to us about that when the script was being put in front of you guys. How, what did y'all think about it? Did you have any questions when y'all were developing that period of 1931? Well, that was my first question. That was my first question about race because, uh, look, you know, you, you can't deny that yes. I'm a six foot four, <laughs> 225 pound black man walking down the street. You can't deny it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is, I said to them, now, I don't know what they had in motion, right. but I asked them, I said, what, do you, what, how are you going to address it? And, and one of the, uh, executives said, oh, we might say something where, uh, where someone says, oh, you know, hey, you got to walk through the back or something like that. And, and again, I don't know how much further they were going to go, but in, 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 when we first, when they first started talking about it, I said, listen, I would like you to address that. Yes. I, I would like you to address it more than just something like that because it wasn't something that one person might have felt. Everybody felt a certain way mm -hmm. about uh, uh, black people. Yes. Everybody that was white felt mm -hmm. a certain way about mm -hmm. black people during mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, 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 I'm not saying everybody was racist, uh, but I'm saying that some things were acceptable and some things were not. Thank you. And mm -hmm. a black man walking amongst white people and giving orders and walking in and walking with us in his authority right. and in his power mm -hmm. was not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Now, as a character, there was no way I was going to back down from that. There's Thank no you. way I was going to. I'm not going to walk into a situation and because now look, if it was a different time period, if I was playing a movie where uh, I was born in that time and it, not that it might be different, yes. but because I'm a man of this age going back in time, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep the authority and the power in which I walk in mm -hmm. because I, I'm, I'm not uh, diminishing the story. You right. See what I'm saying? Well, that's why I loved uh, it. That's why I thought, you know, and looking at the 1931, as soon as they say that time frame, I read that. I said, wow, this is going to be interesting watching your character oh, because yeah. you're not going to become five foot seven. OK. And 165 yeah, right. pounds. <laughs> you know, you still going to be six foot four. That's why you cocked that hat and was striding. Yeah. Because when you yeah. walk in a room, like I said, when you walk in a room, even today, you are a, a room changer because of how you look and your physicality. And so. 1931 you walk into that bar immediately everybody looked at you okay mm. you know because they're going okay we got them being in here why is that big black dude in here and who let him in right. here? you know right. and, and and that's just that just to me is fine with me because that's storytelling but the storytelling that we could not have is that you bowing down or you being talked to badly no, and no. not reacting to it that is what I appreciated no. about last night and thank you yeah. And the thing is, if you notice each time someone like one guy, I think he, he said shadow <clears throat> and the, the implication. Yes. Me was racial. Now, I, you know, it might have been something different, but the implication for me was racial. Mm -hmm. And in the bar, when the guy started, uh, he started to call me a, 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 a racial uh, derogatory word. Right. And and I. And yeah, I, I stepped to them both. I said, what'd you say? Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I stepped to them both. Yes, 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 yes. You know, and that's the thing I appreciate. I'm not, you know, look, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going to blow my cover. But the thing is, is that uh, a man in this age, in this, this, this date and time. Right. Uh, has a certain sense, can walk in his authority, can walk in his power. Yes. And, and, 
And that's something that is ingrained in us. So yes. that was a, a reactionary thing for Mac back then when he was, I, he was in the 30s. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. You know, I just want to let everybody know it's a great series premiere. And but I thought that but that's an underlying tone, especially how women were treated in 1931 and how yeah. people of color were treated in 1931. It's going to be played out through the period while they stand down there. and I think it's really cool because the writers heeded your thoughts and, and a lot of respect because you can't do a great series and you can't send little underlying messages that respect is always the bottom bottom line we're all trying to achieve and in this final mission which is the seventh season of Marvel's Agents of Shields it's really a, a special because of the fact that you're the director women have power women are fighters women are not subservient and they're on a mission to save the world tell us about this this final mission and let us know the direction and what can we expect this season henry well you can expect us to i think it's already been uh told that we are we don't remain in this time right Mm -hmm. we go to different time periods absolutely i think that's already been said Mm -hmm. so i'm not giving anything away Mm -hmm. um and the the one thing I could say is that uh, the mission, I'm trying to say something without giving away, the, the wishes, <laughs> the, the mission, <laughs> it becomes more complicated because, as you know, as, if you go back in time. The ripple, the butterfly effect. You, it's the butterfly effect. If you do something, it changes the future. Mm-hmm. And then maybe if you change the future, then maybe you have to go back to another time. Mm-hmm. to try to express something so it doesn't happen mm-hmm. in, the, in the present time. Right. So it, it, it's, it's a thing where, and, and I, where you were trying to, trying to put out fires and trying to do what's necessary mm-hmm. uh, to stop these chronic comms from taking over. Right. But, but the thing is, is, um, like I said, along the way, you, you just have to be, you know, there's going to be some things where it's going to affect people's lives. And, and look, and look like this, because we're moving through time. Right. There are other people that are going to uh, come, that could possibly come back that we've seen before. That's awesome. That's awesome. Henry, I don't want to yeah. hold you uh, any longer, man. I just wanted I just want to have an honest conversation with somebody I respect, a person I consider a, a mentor for a lot of young people of all colors in this country. But more importantly, in the, in the era that we live today, you know, we all need to look up and see somebody that's doing something different and doing the impossible. And you do it every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Central on ABC. Marvel Agents of Shields. You're the director. The director. Yes, sir. Mr. Mac, yes, the return sir. of the Mac, the turn of the Mac. <laughs> I'm telling you something, Henry, keep that hat cocked, baby, and keep that yeah. stride, man. And I love you, brother. I love you, man. And I, I want to thank you for thank calling Money Making Conversation. You. I hope you appreciated the conversation we had, man, because it was an honest one about you as a talent, man. And sometimes you need to be told, man, you're special, man, that you're making a difference, not only when you go to work and take care of your family and you have your faith in God, but you're affecting people people out there, man, because you go to work, you take care of your family, and you have a respect for God. You're special, man. I, I'm going to tell you this. That. I, and I appreciate that. I've had a, a bunch of auditions, uh, I'm sorry, a bunch of uh, interviews this week, and I'm, honestly, this was the best one. The questions that you've asked uh, are, are meaningful and insightful, uh, not just for me, but I think for other people, mm-hmm. hopefully. Yes, sir. Now, I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. What you're doing is making a difference. Whether you realize it or not, you are making a difference. And I, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my man, you keep winning out there. And you know, we, we need to, when you got a new movie, now you're my, you're my, we're not scope. You know, when they said Rashawn McDonald want to interview you, you go, that's my boy. That's my boy. Light him that's up. my boy. That's, that's my, my man. That's my man. I'm there. <laughs> that's my boy. Hey, man, stay special. Again, everybody, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. airs every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central on ABC. Henry, thank you for making this call with me today on Money Making Conversations. Thank you, brother. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs>